Hello and welcome back to the channel. It's Rust Belt Collector here, and today we're doing rather an acid rain heavy uh, review. <laughs> we're looking at a lot of acid rain figures, and it's not typically or not typical that I get this many acid rain figures in one go. However, it just kind of coincided together. A pre order came in. And someone over on Instagram was selling these two wonderful figures, Sophie and the EOS Raider. Both of them kind of tied together with the pre-order, so I'm bundling them all in one video. I'm not really going to take too in-depth of a look at these two, since both of these figures are discontinued, or they're, you know, they're not in stock anymore. You can get them on the second-hand market, but since they are, I'm not going to go too in-depth on them. They are cool. You should definitely pick them up if you like Acid Rain. But I more wanted to talk about how they would relate to the set that I got in today as well. So let's start it off looking at Sophie. These are just the basic like single figure packs. So you have the card art and then you have the slide out little thing, the little crate. You pop that open and you have a figure inside. Now, if you caught my recent live stream, the uh, the Grail of all Grails live stream, or whatever I named it after the fact, um, that live stream where I revealed some pretty awesome recent mail hauls, uh, you'll know why this figure has an Asajj Ventress head instead of the standard Sophie head, and that is because this is a straight like head swap. This is the 2003 or 2002 Asajj Ventress action figure, and I just wanted to see if this head would pop over directly, and it sure enough does. It does kind of come off as you uh, as you move it around, but it stays on there. It's not just going to fall off or anything like that, and I kind of like how it looks. Like, this looks like some sort of wicked cool, like, I don't even know what to describe it as, but it's some sort of post-apocalyptic alien mishmash. You know, it works. It could work in Star Wars, and it could work in a world like maybe Fallout or some other sort of semi-alien sci-fi world, and I kind of dig it. The uh, the mask here, the little uh, breather mask, doesn't fit perfectly, but it, it fits better than I expected, and that's actually a major bonus. So this is the standard Sophie figure. It is the same female body that we've gotten with pretty much every other female figure. I think first seen with the the AIM uh, Raider or whatever it was. So it is the same figure, it's on the new mold, so it has like the ball jointed shoulders, get outward to there, elbows, double jointed knees, you can have it crouching or sitting and all that kind of stuff. It is the same as this figure as well. So both these figures are on the same body mold. However, there is one very, very distinct reason why I had to get both of these in lieu of getting this uh, new pack that is still like in stock and being produced. And then just really quick, I'll breeze through some of the other accessories. I don't know if I got all the accessories for this figure because this was secondhand and the guy did mention that he didn't know if there were all the parts. I wasn't too bothered about it. I just wanted the main figure and the head sculpt, which you'll see in a moment. But you've got the helmet, the rocket launcher, the sniper rifle, the backpack, which I think, yeah, this is the backpack. And then we have Anakin's head sculpt, which shouldn't be in there. This is actually something that I missed out on for the uh, the live stream. That should have been with all the stuff from that live stream. So we'll just put Anakin's head over there for now. You have the poncho, the carrying case for additional rockets, and a changeable harness. So instead of wearing the body armor, she could wear the... Uh, this like like H harness or something like that. So that's cool. And it is a really nice figure, uh, even if you don't decide to customize it the way that I did. That's just something that I chose to do since this figure would ordinarily just be sitting in a box after I took the head sculpt from it. And why, you may ask, did I take the head sculpt? Well, I will show you in just a moment. And that is with this amazing EOS Raider. Now this figure is part of the 303 Marines, so they released uh, individual Marine characters as well as several vehicles and some other stuff that fits in with this military unit. So they all match in the color of green and the markings on their armor and everything is all in line. So you can have a actual military unit that all matches and looks cool just like you can with like clone troopers and everything else that we collect here on the Rust Belt Collector channel. But this figure in particular had some interest to me, and as you can see, it's pretty much the same figure. It does have Sophie's head, so if you buy Sophie, which is this body, you'll get this head, 
but I decided to put it on the EOS Raider, which again, same body, just in a green colorway. Same accessories as well, just a few differences. I think a different handgun there, a few different pouches. Uh, it comes with a backpack, and then you've got the uh, the helmet here with the like the eyes sculpted in there, which is really cool. You've also got this RPG rocket launcher, which is a different version than what comes with Sophie. You've got this weapon right here, and then you've got the spray can, like a spray paint can. And it did come with, originally it came with like a little, uh, I don't know what you would call it, a stencil? It comes with a stencil that says like 303 on it. And that's because it'd be like this character is spray painting that on vehicles and such. It didn't come with that. That's one of the accessories that was missing, but that is A-OK -okay with me. I'm not too worried about that. Again, I knew some of these accessories were missing in advance. I got a good price for them, and ideally I wanted them for the characters, not so much all the accessories. So that did play a good factor in getting it for such a nice price, and I do appreciate that. But yeah, I just want to showcase these at the start of the video just to kind of show what the figures are. So in case you were considering getting them, I'd say go for it. If you've got any of the female characters from Acid Rain, the articulation is going to be the same. Body and sculpt and everything, all the same. But also, I had to showcase them, specifically Sophie, and specifically the head swap with Sophie on the 303 body, because it really goes well with this pack. Now this is one of the most recent releases from the Acid Rain line. This is the Walk in the Park uh, battle set, I guess. It's an entire battle pack, basically, of all the Bucks team members in a new colorway. Originally they came in the blue colors of Bucks team, and now they're in the camouflage of, I guess not technically the 303 Marines, but it does match the 303 Marines. This pack is so, so cool, and I do believe it is still available for uh, pre-order or order through Pia Club. That's a, a Hong Kong-based toy seller, so it will take a little bit to get here. I think mine took about a week after the ship date to arrive in hand, but it wasn't too bad of a wait. And yeah, you can still find it there. I think it's sold out on all the other retailers, at least the ones that I checked. So. You can check out Pia Club if you're interested in picking up this action figure pack. It is amazing, and honestly, this is a great introduction to the Acid Rain line. Like, if there was one pack or one figure, um, well, not an individual figure, but if there was one way to just get into Acid Rain and have kind of a army build of sorts, like right off the bat, this is... This is it right here. This pack is perfect for that. Now, unlike the other figures, kind of obviously at that, it does not have any of these little crates because it is five figures with lots of accessories and it would just be kind of impractical to package it that way. So it is just a cardboard box with still the really nice artwork here. Then on the back, you can kind of see some display of what's included some poses and an actual list of literally everything that's included. But with all that out of the way, let's break this open and take a look at all the figures. Now the figures all come in this plastic tray, which is just a simple way to store them all nicely and neatly. It is tiered, so you take this off and there's all the accessories underneath. I've already had this out of the package once to do some toy photography, so unfortunately, uh, yeah, it's it's a little bit of a mess right now because I got really excited and jumped right into it for the toy photos, which you can see on my Instagram if you are so inclined. But first off, we have this nice little instruction manual. It's got some references on which accessories go to which figure and how to assemble them and how to assemble some of the, the palettes. It also comes with this portion on the bottom and you can see I've already cut out one of the maps, but it's got like case files and like maps and top secret stuff. Things that are just fun to put in dioramas and displays and toy photos. It's a really nice feature and definitely something that I appreciate. On the back, there is nothing. It is just a blank sheet. But yeah, it's it's really nice. And I guess if you want a close up really quick, you can see if that will focus. You've got like a top secret folder, a couple maps, a couple more maps, and some paperwork, just files. And I'm kind of wondering if you zoomed in really close, if you could actually read what is on there. I doubt it, but you never know. Then we'll take a look at what is beneath here first. We'll take a look at some accessories and see what all is included. First up, we have these really cool barricades, the Bucks Team branded barricades. 
and they can come apart just like that. These can also interlock a multitude of ways. So if you have a vehicle, there are certain vehicles in the acid rain line that allow these to be canopies on top of it. So it would look just like that on top of a vehicle. You can also interlock them this way, though I'm not entirely sure uh, why, but you can uh, just with a little bit more pressure. There we go. So that's for probably some other alternate build. As you saw at the start, you can interlock it sideways like this and have it hinge, or you can do it all the way and have it be a solid wall. And then to actually set them on the ground, you just pop this part out like this, flip it all the way around, and that gives it the stability to set just like that. So we'll put that in the back there, have a little bit of set dressing for this review, and then we get to these. Just more set dressing, more interesting pieces. These are all pallets, and I think that they can be used a number of different ways, like you saw in the paperwork. You can kind of combine them like this or like this to have them be a tent or some sort of structure. You could have them be flooring like duck boards in a trench, or you could have them be the wall of a trench, maybe some sort of uh, structure that's like a makeshift structure at the front lines. There's a multitude of different ways that you can do that, and they do come with these little clips. And the clips just allow you to attach them however you feel inclined to do so. So there's like that, and then I think that there's four of them. So you can attach them this way, and you can also attach them this way, I'm trying to get that to snap on there. I'm always a little bit delicate with my acid rain figures because they don't typically break. I know some of the older releases did, but you know, I just want to be very, very careful with them. And I'm not entirely sure how this, I guess it lines up this way. So you could do something, I guess that wasn't in all the way. There's multitudes of different ways that you can combine these. I'm not gonna do them all on camera because I think that that's kind of uh, redundant after a certain point, but there are different ways to combine these and they're just cool set dressing pieces at the very, very least. Then we have this crate and this barrel, which both are very tricky to actually get out of the, uh, the packaging, but if you go underneath and kind of push them out, it's not as big of an issue, but there we go. We have a Bucks Team crate. It says Bucks Team right there with a little logo. Other than that, it is just a plain crate, and I do believe, yes, you can open it up and you can store all kinds of little military goodies inside of that, which is really cool. It's got a lot of nice detail, and as with all Acid Rain items, it is nicely weathered as well with various paint washes. It looks very cool. You can kind of just set it there and have a nice, uh, a nice crate in your set. Likewise, we have this 50-gallon oil drum with the Bucks Team logo on it, the plugs at the top. Again, nice weathering all around. It looks grimy and greasy like it's just been sitting around on the front lines for a very long time. Not much to say about these items, but they are really cool and I do, I do like them. It adds value to this pack and just is so cool, especially people like myself who really love the Bucks team. And so now you have a full set of them along with a full set of little diorama pieces and display pieces for them. Now for other accessories, we'll start off here with Argus's sniper rifle. It looks really, really cool. You got the little flip down bipod. Same as his earlier release, you know, I think a lot of these accessories are the same for each figure. You're not gonna get something necessarily new, but that's okay, it's classic and it works. For steel, you have the rocket launcher and the rockets in like the little carrying case. Then we have this nice mini gun, which is always very nice for mowing down the enemies. I do love with basically every acid rain weapon, they have the little barrels drilled out, which is just a nice touch. It's a nice little detail, not necessarily needed, but it is appreciated for sure. And here's that map that I was talking about earlier. It is a little bit rougher on the edges, which was intentional on my part because I kind of wanted it to look a little bit weathered and worn and it's folded because I had it draped over the edge of the barrel, which if you uh, check out my Instagram, you can kind of see those photos and understand a little bit more of why that is the way that it is. Then we have not one, not two, not three, well actually, okay, there's three. Three of these Agurts rifles, which are just standard infantry rifles for the Agurts team or the Agurts nation, I guess, in the acid rain world. There's a whole lore and stuff that you can read on the website to understand that a little bit better, but this is their standard infantry rifle. So you get three of those, which is great. I think one for Bob, one for Steel, and one for King. I think, I think that's the order in which those are kind of meant to be assigned. 
Then there are a number of these little clips and I'm realizing now that there are two different variations. You have the wider span and the shorter span. You can kind of see here the differences there. So you get, you get multiple of these in case you lose one or in case you're trying to do a little bit more of a complicated build. There are many of those and that's always appreciated because I feel like I will lose those very, very quickly. Then there are a couple weapons clips. This is for the rocket launcher and this is for the sniper rifle. This one clips around the barrel of the rocket launcher and this one clips to right here on the sniper rifle. If I can get it on, there we go. And then that allows it to peg into the back of Argus. And then finally, just a few small little pieces. We have a sidearm, which is great. Then we have two little hip flasks, which are very, very small and hard to get them to stay in focus. We'll actually come in for a nice close up on these. They are very nicely weathered. They're both identical, but it's good to have two because again, I feel like I will lose these, but that's a nice little addition. Also, we get a set of four of these little shot glasses. They have a nice little pattern on the side. You can go all the way around and they are hollow, but I don't think that anybody our size would get very much liquid in there, unfortunately. Then you get two of these beautifully detailed little beer bottles. Both are stamped with AMM Honey Beer. And if you don't know, um, in the Acid Rain lore, the AMM team is like a beekeeper company, basically, like a large corporate entity that protects their, their interests with a military presence. And it's kind of cool. They all have like yellow armor. And um, so this is the honey that they produce. And I guess they turn it into beer, which I don't know if that's actually technically possible, but uh, let's just assume it is because these are really nicely detailed and I like them. So now let's start talking about the figures and we'll start off here with King. And you know, he's just, he's just a real King, you know, he's like Slay King. He's, he's cool. Yeah, something like that. I don't know. He's a great figure. Now there really isn't much new with this figure or really any of these figures compared to their predecessors. They are pretty much the same with just the additions of the new paint deco and a few accessories to kind of make them blend in a little bit better with the 303 Legion. But I kind of like that. It's more of a mission specific uniform. So they have most of their normal accessories, the baton, the chest rig, the helmet, that's all the same. But then they've added the little camo poncho tunic thing there, as well as this scarf made out of something that I really don't know. It, it looks like it's ghillie material somehow and it, it scales well with the figure. It doesn't look oversized and it's kind of cool. It's a little scarf, you know, he's got a little ghillie scarf of some kind. It kind of reminds me of June from Halo Reach because he had like a little scarf around his armor and I think that's, uh, that's kind of cool. I, I appreciate that. And we can compare him here to the original King figure. The chest rig, the helmet, and the head sculpt are all the same. And I don't have this little baton on this King figure, but I do have it and it did originally come with it. So that's not anything new either. So really the biggest difference apart from the tunic and scarf is the body, which is the new mold for the Acid Rain figure. It's the same as what we've gotten with all the most recent releases. This is the old mold where it used a hinge and a swivel at the shoulder, as well as a single jointed elbow and the wider set hips. This one fixed the wide hip issue as well as replacing the hinge and the swivel with a ball joint, more of a butterfly type shoulder joint. And while it is still single jointed at the elbow, it can crunch much deeper than on the old figures, which is very, very much appreciated. So all in all, it's an upgrade. It's got an upgraded body. It's got a cool like new deco. Both of these figures are still very, very solid. Like I still love this character and this design. I also love the tone of blue that they used on the original Bucks team. And yeah, I'm, I'm okay with it turning into a green figure. It's, it's a cool recolor and I like to see Acid Rain diving into like the repaint market. So we'll set this figure aside and we'll go over articulation on this figure, but then we won't do it on any of these subsequent figures because they're all the same. It's all the same body mold. The only difference are the accessories and the head sculpts and stuff like that. So, so up at the top, we have a double ball joint, which gets you a good range of motion, swivel all the way around. You can look any which way. It is pretty standard there. Then we have the ball jointed like butterfly joint. So you have the forward back up to right about there. But if you want to have him reaching up, you just swivel the arm all the way around. Single jointed elbow, like I showed, gets a really good crunch, which is amazing. Then the hands are hinge and swivel. So this one is an up and down swivel all the way around. This one is an in and an out swivel all the way around. There is a torso joint in there on all these figures. However, on this one in particular, the, uh, the armor does kind of get in the way. So you don't get much of a crunch there. 
There is some play there, which is good, but not very much. Then moving down to the hips, we have a ball joint and a thigh swivel. So under there, there is a ball joint, gets you a good range of motion forward and back, thigh swivel, and then you have double jointed knees, which on these figures, it's a little bit, I don't know, gummy. It seems like it doesn't really want to move smoothly. So I would just say handle the knee joints with a bit of caution. They might have issues. None of mine have broken or stressed or anything like that yet, but I would say just be cautious with them. If they do break, always reach out to Toy Alliance. They're pretty quick to replace parts like that. So just be aware of that. Definitely handle these with care. As the box says, I forgot to list this at the beginning, but as all the boxes say, these aren't technically toys. They are action figures. They are uh, like collectibles. They're not meant to be played with in the traditional sense. They're meant to be more posed and displayed. So again, keep that in mind. These aren't going to necessarily hold up the same way that like a Hasbro action figure will. Then moving down to the ankle, you have the swivel there at the ankle as well as the hinge up and down and then also a rocker, which is great for all those aggressive acid rain poses that you've got to get with your figures. It's great. The articulation on these figures is really, really solid and I do appreciate it so much. It's one of the reasons why I fell in love with this line and even though unfortunately recently it has been kind of pricing me out of it just a little bit because they keep raising their prices. So there is the King figure, the first of five, and I guess I should mention that he does just come with the uh, the standard rifle. That is his primary accessory or his primary weapon in this pack. It's what he's meant to, to hold, and that is what we're going to give him for this little display. The cool thing is this whole pack has basically given me a little backdrop for this uh, for this review, which I think is pretty unique and not something that I get to do terribly often. Next, let's talk about steel, and again, the body mold is the same. All the deco is even the same, so the little stripes are in the right places. There's a little Bucks team logo that I forgot to mention that is on their left shoulders. And yeah, it's the same figure. The only difference are the accessories. He's got the helmet, the gas mask, a little hood that goes around his neck, this armor piece, this belt, and the tunic. And if we compare him to original steel, mine is... A little bit goofily posed for some reason but if we compare him here it's uh, again pretty much identical all the accessories are the same the little armor piece the helmet the head even the little uh, the neck piece there the, uh, the little hood although it is slightly recolored from the darker grayish blue color to this more greenish brown color I guess and also on this older figure the soft goods are just around his waist whereas on this figure it's a full body tunic that goes over the whole torso, which I guess is an upgrade perhaps, but again, it all comes down to maybe your preference on colorways. If you don't like the green and the camo, and you prefer this blue-gray drab color, I totally get it, and I think that these are still awesome figures. But yeah, he's really cool. I like him. Steel was one of the ones I remember having the hardest time tracking down with the original Bucks team. He was very expensive for a time. I don't know what he's going for now, but I remember finding him for a pretty good deal and being very excited because I remember at one point he was up to like $150 I think for just just the original steel figure and when I found him for considerably less than that I was very very happy so I don't know what he's going for now but I still have my complete Bucks team in the original colorway I don't plan on getting rid of them now that I have this one at all I think that it's cool to have both Especially if you're doing like toy photography, one might be better in one situation and the other better in another situation. However, for some reason, I can't find my Argus and Bob figure that I was going to use for this review to do comparisons, and that's very unfortunate. So I can still show you Jack and show that comparison, but the last two figures in this review, I unfortunately will not have the original figure to compare it to. And speaking of Jack, here is one of the ones that... Oddly enough, I feel like this was the uh, the least popular out of the original Bucks team. I saw a lot of people online and in like the community forums saying that Jack was not very popular, not their favorite, they didn't like his design, yada yada yada. And I couldn't disagree more because I think that Jack is one of the coolest. He's got this wild hairstyle going on, very anime, very like stylized, but it still just looks so cool. And then, I mean, just look at him. He's He's wielding 
five pistols all over his body. He is an absolute mad lad, and his design always appealed to me. I thought it was amazing, and I still do to this day. Once again, nothing has really changed between the original and the new one. Uh, again, the new body mold has changed, but the hood is still there, all the holsters are still there. Uh, the only difference is they gave him this camouflage tunic, just like with all these other figures. The original does not have a tunic of any kind. And there is a little bit of paint deco here on his armor that isn't on the original. It looks like a little spade from, like, a deck of cards, you know? And, there, you know, that's not a big deal. That's cool. It's nice to have some variety between the two. They don't have to be identical to be amazing. And it's interesting because I haven't gotten these guys out in a while, and I'm realizing just how like different the plastic feels it seems like they may have switched plastics between the older figures and the new figures i'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing i've never really had issues with either and so you know it's probably just something to do with production and not a big deal but but like i've also noticed that some of my joints are looser on my old figures which is just natural wear and tear but i'm like man i didn't realize that these figures were uh, were as loose as they were compared to like a brand new out of the box figure where the joints are still kind of stiff and need worked on. And yeah, there's the there's the jack figures. And I guess there is one variation that I'm noticing now also the the paint here on the hair is a little bit darker on the old figure and a little bit lighter on the new figure, but again, very very minor differences and it still looks amazing. Now there's something really cool that I just noticed with this figure as I was posing him and I was going to put him in the background. He actually has two hinge and swivel wrists that are up and down. So his dominant hand is up and down as well as his secondary hand, which is a nice little foresight from the Acid Rain team because, you know, this guy's going to be wielding dual wield weapons and it makes sense to make his figure with uh wrists that can do that can do that, you know? That's not something that you see with uh with a lot of companies when they're making action figures where they're going to uh, have dual wield weapons. You know, with like Captain Rex and Commander Bly, those guys both dual wield pistols, and both of those figures have mismatched wrists. One is up and down, one is in and out, and I would be really impressed if they actually took the extra step to make it like this figure, where he's got both of them going up and down, which is just better suited for the type of weapons that he's holding. Now let's talk about Argus, the sniper of the team. And this figure actually has maybe the most drastic change out of all of them, and it's really just here in his poncho. The original figure had a ghillie suit made out of the same mesh that is around King's neck there, and instead they swapped it out for this camouflage poncho, which is not a big deal. It matches very nicely with the figure. I think it's a great upgrade, a great change. However, it is the biggest change that we've seen out of this pack so far, and I think it works really well. It's nicely folded around the back, and then this peg for his rifle actually holds the tunic in place. While I do wish that this draped a little bit more around his figure, it is kind of cool, like in a stylized way, the way that it sticks out very sharply. It almost makes it look like he's maybe standing on top of a cliff and this is just blowing in the wind. I could get that it's not for everyone being how stiff the fabric is and maybe you could find a way to uh, to fold it down and then get it to stick. It, it, it actually might, you know, you can kind of see there, it actually might, but out of the box it is probably going to look like that. I think also Argus has one of the coolest gas mask helmets or heads that they gave for any character. He's got these sweet, like, I don't know, night vision goggles or flashlights on the side of his helmet, and he just looks menacing. Like, I could just imagine you'd see this come out of the darkness with, like, glowing dots all over, and it would just be really kind of eerie, you know? And I like it. And also, he does have an ammo pouch and an armor plate under his poncho, so he's not just, like, a figure with a poncho. He actually does have armor under there, so if you wanted to, you could take this off and have him just be uh, wearing his armor. It might be a little bit tricky to put it back on. I've never dared to take off ponchos with Argus because uh, that would be very difficult if I couldn't figure out the exact way that it went on, you know. So I leave him like this, and I think it looks very, very cool. And of course, what would Argus be without his gigantic, oversized, and kind of amazing sniper rifle? And of course, he does hold this very well. It doesn't seem to be too bad, though I will say um, it does make him a little bit front heavy, as you might imagine. So you might consider just giving him a, uh, a more crouched position. Something maybe more a little like that. If you're going to display them kind of just hanging out around the, uh, the base, you know, you can have them just like that. And finally, the intrepid leader of Buck's team, we have Bob. What a name. What a name for a character. Bob. 
He is Bob. And there's nothing more to say about him. He is Bob. But actually, there's plenty more to talk about him. And it's a really good figure. Like all of these, I, I think it's cool. I think Bob is still one of my favorites, both in design as well as just, like, I don't know. He's got a good head sculpt, you know? He's got this, like, old rugged face, and it looks cool. And his backstory is pretty neat as well, if you want to read that on the Acid Rain website. But one of the... But one of the cool things with Bob when you... <clears throat> But one of the cool things with Bob in the original release was that he was kind of an army builder. You could take off his head sculpt like I did, and you could swap it out for this one, which is just like a generic, if I can get it to go on, it's just like a generic gas mask. Now mine does not seem to want to go on. It might be a little bit malformed from the, uh, from the molds or something like that, but it did finally go on. There we go. Now once you have that on, you can either give him this helmet, which I think looks really, really cool, or you can give him this helmet. There we go. And yeah, this was basically back in the day with the original Bucks team members. It was a great way to army build. You could just buy a bunch of Bob, swap out the head, and basically have your own little army of Bucks team soldiers. Though I don't think many people will do that with this version because it is a five pack and you're ending up with four additional figures to an army builder, so I don't think that that is going to happen. But it is still cool that they included those accessories, so I guess, you know, if you did pick up an extra one for whatever reason, maybe you could sell the other figures and still end up with a little army builder of your own. But they are still releasing the 303 Marines and other figures that match this color pattern, so it would be pretty easy to build up a small army of this particular unit if you were so inclined to do so. And uh, yeah, it's, it's cool. I like the camouflage. I think it's really nice. The accessories are fantastic with this pack, and I absolutely love it. And now I can finally show why I specifically wanted this body for the Sophie head sculpt. It's because the EOS Raider comes in pretty much a matching green, or at least close enough of a matching green, for her to fit in with this version of Buck's team. So now you have the, uh, the old body, which would be this one, and this matches the old Buck's team, just like these figures here. It would match this colorway, and then you could just swap the head over, and now you have this version that matches the new Walk in the Park set. All in all, it was perfect timing to find this Sophie figure right as I was getting the uh, the Walk in the Park set in the mail. It was really, really convenient, and both of them arrived within the same week, and then I got to filming this, and you're here now seeing this, and this is the end result. This is going to look absolutely amazing on display, having the full team, and now I can display them in new or old armor and have a Sophie to match them. It is absolutely perfect, and... I gotta say, this is probably one of the most, uh, like, bang-for-your-buck kind of, no pun intended with Buck and Buck's team, but it's basically the best for your value in terms of recent Acid Rain releases, and I'm really pleased with that. Now, before we wrap up this video, let's do a quick comparison between the Acid Rain figures and other 118 or 3 and 3 quarter inch scale figures. So we'll use Bob here because he is standing up straight, and here he is next to a three and three quarter inch Star Wars action figure. You can see here the three and three quarter inch scale is slightly smaller than a true 118 scale, so they aren't going to match exactly perfectly. There's obviously going to be a pretty aggressive height difference there. But then again, you might not be really mixing the Acid Rain and Star Wars worlds together, especially not in a display. And then here he is next to a Marauder's Task Force. Uh, this is a World War II British soldier, but I think all their figures are in a true 118 scale. So again, you could actually mix and match these figures together. You could get Marauder's Task Force, Acid Rain, and I believe also Joy Toy. All of those are going to line up pretty much like eye level with each other. They're based around a true 118 scale, and it, it works. So you could kit bash these together if you were so inclined and make some really awesome customs. And then finally, here he is next to a box of world-famous Greedo's Bounty Crunch Krispies. And you can see that they do not scale well together at all. But there we have it. There is the complete A Walk in the Park pack by, uh, by Acid Rain and Toy Alliance. These figures are, once again, amazing. I love them. And I think I will include a link down in the description to uh, the Pia Club where you can get these. 
I think they're still up for order, so uh, just to try and help you guys out if you're not familiar with how to order through them. I've ordered through them multiple times, so just know like they are a legitimate company. They're they're legit, it just might take a little bit for the items to actually ship over to you. As always, there's also going to be a link tree down in my bio for my Instagram, my Facebook, all those good things you can visit there. There's also a link to Entertainment Earth. If you want to do any shopping for pre-order or in-stock action figures, you can do it through that link and you actually help support the channel, which I do really appreciate. Thank you for everyone who has uh, uh, actually gone through that link and placed orders. It's been a huge help and I do appreciate that. But as always, uh, that's, that's all there is for this video. So thank you for watching, and I will be sure to catch you all in the next video.